<gasps> Boom. Hey guys, I'm gonna take a couple of Alumalite dyes, a little bit of mica powder, and I'm gonna create a beautiful soft gray marbled finish. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. Okay, so what we're gonna do today is I had a friend of mine who is a contractor bring me this countertop that he fabricated himself. So we're just doing the finish. We did do a sample board. He showed it to the customer, she approved it, and now we're moving forward. All right, so this piece is going to be up next to some really rustic uh, wood paneling. So she wanted to bring in some grays because she has grays on the floor. Also, this is a auto uh, parts or auto mechanic store. So she kind of wanted to keep those gray vibes in the finish. So we came up with a very, very simple uh, piece because we don't want it to be super busy because the wood it's next to is very busy. All right, so what I've done, I've mixed up 72 ounces of our Art Coat Stone Coat Countertop Epoxy. And the piece is 24 square feet, so we're doing three ounces per square foot. All right, so here we go. We're gonna mix it up before we do that. Anytime you mix a mica powder, which is, uh, this one's gonna be Blue Earth. This is absolutely gorgeous. And it is um, gonna add just enough shimmer to this piece. And so you can see this is a really pretty color. And all of these products are available on our website. Now, anytime that you do a mixture of or you're gonna be adding mica powder to epoxy. You wanna use our thin dispersion and create what we call a slurry. And the reason we do that is it helps the mica powder to really be mixed well so that you don't get the little fish eyes that you often get when your epoxy is not mixed up well with your mica powder. Almost like when you make a brownie and you go to pour it in the bowl, you, um, you get these little dry spots. So what I'm trying to do is get it to the point where it's not really runny, but it's not a hard paste. So I'm able to mix this all up, help the micas dissolve, or I guess, suspend. I don't know. They're not actually dissolving, I would say, but this is the consistency that you want. Now, if you add too much of your dispersion, it will, it will cause your epoxy to not cure as fast, stay sticky just a little bit longer. So you want to be really careful on how much you used. I literally probably used with this amount maybe two capfuls, that's it. Okay, so now we're gonna add our epoxy. So I'm only gonna be mixing two colors and then we'll be adding other colors once we poured the epoxy. We'll be adding some other colors with our uh, spray paints. Now I've got now I've got three containers. I'm gonna add. I'm gonna make a gray background, but I'm gonna make two different shades of the gray, so we have a little bit of depth in there. There's not gonna be a lot of difference in the two shades of, of gray, but just enough to give it a hint hint of depth. All right, here we go. We're gonna start off our first one with the white alumalite dye, and we're gonna make this very opaque. I don't want to be able to see through the material. So the way I do that is once I mix it, I make sure that I can't see through the material and see the grain on my stick. I can, so I'm going to go just a little more opaque on this finish. You can see. I want it just a little bit darker, or more opaque, actually. Make sure when you're mixing that you scrape the edges of your bucket and make sure that color is all the way through. There, that's much better. All right, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna come in with the black opaque. Now guys, 
This, you have one shot at. Because if you get this too dark, the first time, you can't go back lighter unless you mix up a lot more epoxy. Because if you just keep adding and adding and adding colorants, you're gonna get above your 10% threshold and you're gonna start noticing it that it compromises the integrity of the epoxy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of that dye. You can do it on a tabletop, just about anything you want to. But I'm not gonna risk going straight in there with um, drop dripping it because I don't wanna get too much in there. Oh yeah. Okay. Definitely want it darker. I do that same amount twice. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit darker. So in this case, I could have just gone on in there and put a drip, but if I would have done it the first time, my luck, I would have got a lot more than what I wanted. All right, so that's really pretty. All right, so what we have left in the bucket, I'm gonna mix up a little darker than this. And that's gonna give us almost a marbly look. So I know I want a little more on this one, okay? Oh yeah, that's pretty. In fact, I like that darkness a little more. I'm gonna actually add some of this in there. This is how I cook, y'all. I just kinda throw it in there. If it works, it works. Yep, that's it. Look at there. Mm-hmm. All right, so here we go. We're gonna just start laying this stuff down, very random. Some areas you'll have more of the dark color. Some areas you'll have more of the light color and it just makes it look a little more authentic. All right, here we come in with the light gray. All right, here goes the Blue Earth Metallic. This is such a beautiful blue to mix with a gray. Okay, so we've got everything laid out. Now, at this point, you can decide if you want to use a trowel, if you wanna use your hand, a brush, a roller, anything that you want to kind of meld all this out. But whatever you do, you don't wanna over meld because then all you've done now, if you over meld, is make one color. Um, so you want the colors to be a little separate. So I'm just gonna come in here and start melding this out. And right now I'm just trying to get the product on the piece. I can get more specific about my edges and everything as I go. Now this piece, we're trying to create very soft patterns. So I am actually gonna meld it a little more than I would on a lot of my other pieces. The customer wants to be a very soft meld. Like I said, I'm not worried about my edges at this point. This has got to move a lot, so you can't judge anything from at the very beginning. You're gonna have to kind of let the epoxy do its thing. All right, now we're gonna start working on our edges. This is where I like to bring my hand, and we'll just roll that over. Now I'm not worried that I'm doing a rub kind of more horizontal, because as this epoxy continues to roll, those colors are gonna roll down over and give us a really pretty edge. I really like how there's big pockets of that darker and lighter gray. So when you're doing your rollover, make sure you take your fingers and you push that epoxy under so that helps that to really roll over the edge. And this is the stone coat art coat. You're gonna have plenty of open time on this product. In fact, we're gonna almost have to kind of hurry up and wait 
while this product starts to set up a little bit before we go to our next step. All right, so we got that front edge. I'm a little thin here. So what I do is when I'm seeing if I'm a little thin in areas, I'll come pick up some of that color and I'll bring it down and just lightly spread it. Again, being very careful that I don't over meld this piece. Now I'm kind of coming back and just kind of cleaning up my striations a little bit. Again, I'm not worried because as this starts to flow over, I'm gonna start getting my striations again on my edges. See where I leave this blue? I kind of do that on purpose. Now that's gonna, as that falls down, it's gonna give me a really pretty striated edge. Kind of bring that blue right there. Same thing on this back edge. So this countertop's actually gonna have, both sides are gonna be exposed. It's kind of a checkout desk, I believe is what they were saying. So both sides have to look good. Now you can see as I'm melding, I'm being careful not to over meld. You can still see there's definite distinctions in my colors. All right, so we've melded everything together. We've pushed the product over the edges and now I'm gonna torch to get all the bubbles out. Okay, so I love this, but I do wanna add a little bit more of the blue to my edges. So I've saved a little bit of the blue in my bucket. And like I said, I'm not really worried, even if I come and lay it like this, that's gonna roll over and give me a really pretty edge. I'll come back and check it. But right now, I'm just trying to get that color on the edge. I'm really not even worried about how it's gonna roll down. There's quite a bit of blue right there. So I'll go to this back side and do the same thing. And then I'll come back here in just a minute as it starts to roll and I'll manipulate it a little bit with my hand. I'm just trying to give those edges a little bit of character. All right, so now I'm just gonna kind of help that. Like I said, we have, we have quite a bit to do yet on the surface, so I'm not really worried about how that melds in the top. All right, so I'm gonna come back now and add a little bit of uh, detail work with some browns. Uh, we're gonna add a little bit of white and some silver metallic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mix up my brown opaque. So what I'm using is the brown alumilite dye. I'm gonna stir it and see where I'm at color-wise. Now what I really like about this brown, it is a gorgeous brown. Look at that. So pretty. I don't know if you can see that. But I want to give it a little more depth so I'm gonna add a tiny bit of black, just, just to warm it up. And when I say a tiny bit, it's so tiny, y'all can't see it, how about that? Look at this, that little bitty dot. All I'm gonna do is rich, make that chocolate a little richer. Now it's dark chocolate instead of milk chocolate, how about that? All right, so we're gonna add that ever so often to the top. I don't wanna do a lot of it. I do wanna go over the edge I want that color to go over the edge, creating some designs. I'm not worried about that. I'm gonna meld it all out. Little bit, we can always add more. All right, now we're gonna come in with white spray paint. I think what I'm gonna do before I do that, I'm just gonna see if I like, if that's the color that I like, yes. All right, so I'm running that Bondo spreader through there and kind of making it almost a, like a vein. Kind of dragging that Bondo spreader around, picking up and kind of making a vein. So I really like that. I think I'm gonna do it like that. That way I can see if I wanna add white in certain areas. So you saw how little of that brown that I put in there. But see how I'm picking it up as I drag it across the top? See how it's picking? I'm just kind of letting that Bondo spreader spread over the top. And that's really what's creating my, my veins. Because I want very, very soft veins. 
and I want that brown to kind of run. And I can even go other places with that. Move it over, make, make another little vein. Very, very soft. I'm not following exactly where I laid it down. If you want that vein, if you don't want it to be that distinct, take your Bondo spreader and kind of turn it sideways so you're dragging it and then you can straighten back up. And that'll take that vein, widen it out just a little bit and make it look very organic. Now I'm not worried about my edges quite yet. I'll come and address those here in just a little bit. Give that color a chance to kind of flow down the edge. If you wanted more brown striations, you come back, you add a little bit of more brown. But if I would have added all that brown at the first, I wouldn't know what to do if I didn't want that much. This way, I can kind of dis distinct or tell myself, do I want more or not? Real distinct veins or real soft veins? And you don't have to do it exactly the same. As you move down, you can change up your veins a little bit because that's going to make it look just a little more natural and give the piece more, um, I guess it just looks more realistic. Because you're not going to find a piece of uh, slab that's got the exact design running through it all the way. All right, so now I'm going to come in here. I'm going to touch these edges, get them to start flowing down. That's pretty. I like that because it's going straight down. So I'm not going to touch that yet. I'm going to soften this one up a little bit. There we go. Oh, I like that. I'm not going to touch that. I'm going to soften this one up a little bit. Add a little bit more. And you can always add more product to soften it up because that's going to keep rolling. Remember guys, this is your color coat. You're gonna come back with your flood coat. So any imperfections that you see right here, we'll be able to fix with the flood coat um, as far as how much product we have on the edge. Obviously we're having a lot more product here than we do right here, but when we flood coat this, we'll be fine. And I'm gonna come back and torch this as we drug our um, Bondo spreader in. We incorporated just a few bubbles, so we'll come and address those here pretty quick. Okay, I'm loving it. So now we're going to add just a few more details on top. We're going to come in with white gloss spray paint, and we're not going to do this everywhere, just a few spots here and there. And I'm not going to do it the whole way. I'm going to come back and do the rest because you don't want that spray paint sitting on top. This is the hammered silver spray paint. And again, only a little few places. And then I'm going to come back in with my Bondo spreader. And we're going to start spreading that out. Lightly touching it, still running it through. And I really like as we keep bringing up and keep moving our uh, Bondo spreader over the top, we're bringing that blue mica powder back up. We're kind of waking that mica powder back up a little bit, and it's really pretty. So the original sample board, the customer really liked the little bit of the white. She liked it as we pulled it through there. And that silver, that hammer paint gave just a little bit of shimmer. And you're really going to see how cool it looks when I hit it with some alcohol. And again, I'm just kind of taking that Bondo spreader, dragging it some ways, other ways. I'm using the tip. Kind of softening it out just a little bit. Now I'm going to hit it with some clear isopropyl alcohol. Oh, wow. Just enough to give these details on top. 
Now, what you can do also is if that alcohol hit your vein and say you just didn't want that look, you can re-drag your vein, wake up your vein and move it back through there. I kind of like how it's softening out that vein. All right, so let's, I'm gonna soften this out a little bit. Depending on how the, you see it in the light is gonna depend on how much of that silver that you put. If you really want a lot of metallic on the, on the sh uh, top, you can add more. I don't want a whole lot, I want just a hint. All right, so let's go do this. Now, the reason I didn't spray the whole top with the white and then come back and spritz it is you don't want that white spray paint to dry on the surface. So you just have to do a little bit at a time. Same thing with your silver. Now this I really like. So that wherever you have more concentrated amount of the white spray paint, you can kind of take your Bondo spreader, use the edge, and then soften it back out. Okay, I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of alcohol. Now when you hit it with alcohol, guys, you cannot use too much alcohol. You put a lot of alcohol on your surface and you're gonna have uh, a really runny surface. So you want to just very lightly. And I also am really careful when I use that alcohol on my edges because I don't want a lot of alcohol on my edges because that's going to cause it to have like run spots. And I don't, that's not the look I'm going for. Again, you can come in here and kind of soften out those veins as well. If you want more of a striated look, turn the Bondo spreader. I want this to be a little bit more dynamic here. I want you to see a little bit more of that white. So I'm gonna use the side of my Bondo spreader. Now watch when I hit that with alcohol. By leaving bigger pockets of white, you get more of that design, as opposed to if I run it flat and make it softer you'll get a softer look when I hit it with the alcohol. I love this. So you're getting this, see these little, almost little speckles? That's the blue earth metallic. That's what happens when you hit metallic with alcohol. And I love that. Again, it's one more layer of depth that you're getting. Oh wow, look at this. Look at that right there. Is that not gorgeous? And the reason we're getting this and the reason that's gonna stay is because we let the epoxy set up just a little bit before we hit it with the alcohol. Okay, well, let me let this set just a minute. We'll uh, be back in just a second and make a final decision if we wanna go a little bit more with the white. Okay, guys, like I said, this could be a finish all on its own and I could walk away right now and be very happy, but we're gonna add the secret sauce, and that is clear epoxy mixed with diamond dust. Look at that, woo-wee! That's gonna take us to the next level. All right, I don't want a lot of this, okay? So this is gonna be in an automotive, a lot of dudes, so I don't think going a lot of, lot of bling, just a little bit. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna kind of, just kind of run this very random down. And as it gets thinner, look at that. Mmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Now I'm not running it exactly with the veins that are there. Okay, I'm kind of going very random because I don't want to everything to run in exact in the exact direction. Add 
as I start off, the veins are a little thicker. And then as it continues to drip, I get very, very, very tiny fracture lines. Now I'm not gonna wanna torch much after this because I, um, I don't want those veins to separate. I want them to stay very, very tight. All right, so it's been 24 hours. Our top is uh, dry and hard enough for us to sand. Make sure that if your top uh, is 24 hours old and it's still a little tacky, it may be because the environment is a little cooler than what mine is. So also excuse the banging noise in the back. It's our uh, exhaust fan and it's windy here. So um, what we're gonna do now is pour a clear coat of countertop epoxy. Same product that we used for the color coat, except this time, the only thing that we're gonna add into it is a product uh, that I started carrying called Just Resin, and it is a fabulous product. It's a very, very, very fine uh, glitter, almost uh, like our diamond dust and our gold dust, but it is, um, uh, it's multicolored, which is really, really cool. And I put a very, very, very tiny amount in the mixture because I don't want that to be my focal point. I want it to just catch your eye a little bit. All right, so we're mixed up three ounces per square foot on this. And also we have a whole video on how to do a flood coat. Uh, and it to turn out really, really well. So we will link that video in the description and that way you can go check that out. All right, so here we go. We're gonna take that, just pour it out. Make sure when you scrape your bucket that you make sure that that extra product goes in to a mass and not off by itself. And then you can stir it up really well and make sure that you don't get sticky spots. Okay, most of the time I do use my hand, but because this is a larger area, area I am gonna use a trial. Then I'll come back with my hand and make sure that I really get it tucked up underneath those edges. All right, so once I get it all trialed out, now I'll use my hands. I don't push that material over the edge when I'm using the trial. I wait and use my hands to do that. That way I can kind of control how much flows over the edge and I can really use my fingers and push it up so that that epoxy flows very evenly all the way under the piece. Okay, so now that everything is um, poured and I've pushed it out and everything's nice and level, I'll torch it three times, waiting about two to three minutes in between torching to get rid of my bubbles, and then I will leave it alone for another 24 hours. All right, so it's very important to know the product that you're using very well. Uh, I use Stone Coat Countertop Epoxy. In my opinion, it's one of the very best on the market, and we've used it exclusively in our uh, business. There are great products out there, guys, but not every single product is the same. Some products require spritzing with um, denatured alcohol, uh, instead of using the torch. So just make sure that you know uh, what is required of your product. All right, guys, so we'll let this sit for 24 hours and then uh, the UTC will be applied. The customer has decided to go with a gloss UTC. I won't be showing it on this video, however. I will uh, link in the description a really good tutorial on how to apply the ultimate top coat. All right, guys, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, hit the bell for future notifications. That way, every single time we post a video, you guys will know it. And also subscribe to our channel. We're trying to get our numbers up. I would love, 
love, love to be able to hit 50,000 by the summer. I think that's doable. All of these products are available on our website, rk3designs.com. Sign up for our newsletter, guys. That's real important. Go to the bottom of our page, sign up, and that way you guys will receive exclusive promo codes that we only offer to our newsletter subscribers. So make sure you do that. All right, guys, until next week, you know what to do. Don't be scared. Move forward and be creative.